Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Fear Free Passive Investing, where we help busy professionals navigate the world a passive commercial real estate investing. And we have a special treat today. If you're a fan of Grant Cardone, you will not want to miss what one of his investors has to say about an email he just got. We're gonna glean some really great insight into how your sponsor should and should not be communicating with you when you make a passive investment. But before we get into today's show, um, I wanna give you some context to what we are gonna be talking about in this episode. Um, so we both created a video about Grant Cardone and I want you to see my video before you listen to this podcast because it's really gonna give you some context into some of the stuff that I was talking about. So uh, check the description. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching the podcast, It'll be linked down in the description and in the video cards. If you're listening on the podcast app, it'll be down in the description. So make sure to check that out. And while you're there, I would love if you liked and subscribed to the YouTube channel. We do a ton of content every single week, and I would love to have you uh, subscribed and listening. So with that, we are going to get into today's episode and welcome Kyle Stanley to the show. Uh, Kyle's been investing for one and a half years um, so not that long, but long enough to definitely get some traction. He's really killing it with the Airbnb game and flipping. Uh, he lives in Fresno, California, and he invested about 10% of his net worth uh, into Cardone Capital as a passive investment. And I'm really excited for you to hear what he has to say. So with that, let's jump into the show. All right, Kyle, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me, Lucas. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited about this interview. This is one that... Um, I, I actually sought you out specifically to talk about, um, you know, your first passive investment, what I imagine is your first passive investment yep. uh, with a very popular figure. And we'll get into that in a minute. But for those who don't know you and your real estate journey, give us like uh, a run up to where we're at today, how you got started and what you're doing now. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll keep it brief because I know that that's not the, the point of what we want to talk about. But long story short, I, you know, had a lot of different careers slash businesses that I had owned before this. Um, I was in the news. I was a sports anchor. I had a sports videography business, helping athletes get recruited to play in college. I uh, went into health and wellness, went into sales, and then eventually, you know, found this thing called real estate and realized like, oh my gosh, this is what I should have been doing all along. I uh, got very passionate about that. And then, you know, kind of under my nose the entire time, um, when I when I said yes to real estate, it was January 6, 2019, but I had started an Airbnb business. Well, not business really. I had just started doing Airbnb out of my home since 2015, and it was like two or three months into starting to flip houses that I was like, wait, I guess Airbnb is kind of like doing real estate too, <laughs> and um, turned that into a ginormous, well, I mean, compared to like what I was used to a ginormous business that went from a thousand dollars a month to fifteen thousand dollars a month and essentially wow. what seemed like overnight in about five months um and then today even with all the craziness going on uh, we're still seeing high high success in not just airbnb but the short-term rental space having our best month last month where we uh grossed roughly over about twenty four thousand dollars so um yeah, and, and all that being said, I, I have my own podcast, uh, Fearless Flipping, and I just love interviewing people and, and finding out other exit strategies, and especially right now in ways to adjust. You know, I'm getting into like creative financing and terms and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's just uh, always moving. Yeah, yeah, this is really fun because um, most of the people that we have on this podcast are obviously uh, passive investors. So there's sure. not very many active investors. So, so it's really exciting to talk to someone who's in this air, day in and day out. Uh, but you also have a very popular YouTube channel and podcast, like you said. Um, tell us about how we became connected in that video that you started and uh, why you're here today. Yeah, I mean, um, basically, I, I don't know if I would call it a very popular. I had one <laughs> one video that's going I guess, quote unquote, viral right now. But um, yeah, I mean, long story short, I I uh, had invested in Cardone Capital uh, with Grant Cardone right around, I want to say it was December 2018. So before I said yes to real estate as a career, 
Um, I was just looking to put some money in something that I didn't have to worry about. And I fell in love with the idea of real estate, but because I had a full-time job and a full-time other focus along the same lines, my dad was in hospice at the time. Um, and I just really wasn't trying to like, you know, reinvent the wheel. I just wanted to be in something solid. And, uh, you know, Grant, uh, Uncle G talks about, you know, all these great things of uh, why to invest with him. And, you know, he's, he's a good salesman, he's a good marketer. And, and I do not really even um, disagree with a lot of the things he's doing. But as of recently, I, I don't know that he's a person that I would want to be doing business with per se. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm sure you're going to have some questions for me about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because I, I guess we probably made our videos at the same time, but I also made a video about him and the premise of it was like, I kept hearing over and over again, cause I, I do watch his stuff and I kept hearing over and over again that cash is trash. And he, it's like this mantra he continues to talk about. And so I made this video basically saying like, if he is structuring his multifamily investments, with that mindset that cash is trash, he's in some serious trouble. If he doesn't have the adequate reserves, like this is real estate investing 101, if you don't have adequate cash reserves, uh, you're gonna struggle through some down times. And so, uh, I, you know, since making that video, it's just been a wave of people saying like, oh, he just laid off like 80 people. He sent out this letter, which I know you got. Um, he's suspending dis distributions, which again, like, I don't disagree with that. And we can get into that a little bit too, but um, it seems like a lot of people were left with a bad taste in their mouth, um, how he did that. And it, it seems like that's probably your experience too. Yeah, it, it is. Um, you know, it's funny, you know, because all these messages just get so mixed up. Um, and I, I, I'm sure just like you, I've been getting so many interesting comments on my YouTube channel, on my yeah. Instagram, uh, someone uh, a big time Instagram page just posted about uh, this yesterday and used my uh, my content to to reference nice. what's going on with Grant Cardone, which was pretty cool. But you know, just reading all these comments, it's funny because I'm not disagreeing with the move of stopping paying syndicators uh, or mm -hmm. stopping paying investors. Um, I I think just like anything right now, you know, in in my business with Airbnb we stopped doing Airbnbs and we transitioned over to short-term rentals. That was a tough decision. Uh, and what I mean by short-term rentals is it's, it's month to month. And uh, that was a really tough decision because what that meant was a lot of our cleaners uh, were going to have a lot less work. And, you know, those are tough conversations to have during a very tough time. Uh, but right now, like the, the biggest issue that I had was not the decision it was the the message of the decision um and it and that's really like we're and we're not even talking about hurt feelings like i think a lot of people are like saying there's comments too saying like oh you know this guy is just being a baby yada. i'm i'm just saying like if what i'm trying to do is educate people that like is this if you're gonna put a large sum of money into something is this the type of person that you want to be doing business with who will make decisions and make it seem like it's just another Wednesday and not actually give you like the, the time of the day to, to share a plan, to share uh, some sympathy for the situation, to uh, share exactly why they're doing this. And, you know, I, I could read the email for you if you wanted me to, but it was the, the whole idea behind it was just like, Hey, we're doing great, but we're not going to pay you. <laughs> um, and that that's a really weird email to get from someone who puts in, basically 10% of his net worth and expects to have what has been called a guarantee every single month. Um, and, and suddenly it's just like, Oh yeah, by the way, like this is happening. So, you know, that, that, that's just the issue that um, I had and I felt that people needed to know about that. Yeah. It, it, and that's something that's syndication itself is kind of a new to a lot of people. And we talk about this on my show a lot that um, this is, this is a new world for a lot of people. You really have to understand everything about it before you're going to feel comfortable or, you know, not have fear, like both of us talk about, um, education is the bedrock of that. And when you realize that how operators make money, um, syndication operators make money, and then how you get paid are two very different things. And they don't necessarily always go hand in hand. And what Grant did, uh, you know, I totally agree with, right? Across our entire portfolio, we stopped distributions. Uh, but I also sent out an email 
and it it was not necessarily that good. I ex went into a lot of detail about why we're doing this, but then I picked up the phone and I called every single one of our investors, and that's yeah. that's a lot of phone calls. Um, and so that that put that personal touch on and just said, hey, yeah. like I'm right here with you. I invest in these deals too. I, you know, I'm not getting money. I'm losing money. Um, yeah. and, and that puts a human touch on it, but at the same time, like nobody knows where we're going to be at. And so ha holding on to that cash is like yeah. paramount. And so that's why I found it so ironic that someone who talks about cash as trash is avoiding sending out distributions because he wants to hoard that cash. And anyway, yeah. that being well, said. Well, and, and with just, just pointing out like what you said there, the, the huge difference there is just that like you took the time to share with your investors that they're important to you. And, yeah. you know, this was a big decision for a lot of people. I got a guy that messaged me last night on Instagram saying he put in $200,000 and he's pissed. And, and he's asking me questions about what, what's going on that, that Grant should be giving yeah. the answers to. Yeah. Right. And so, and so that's, that's just the thing is like, apparently there was a zoom call. I didn't know about the zoom call. If I don't know about the Zoom call uh, and I and I don't have the invite to that, or you assume that I have the invite to that, then I'm missing big information. Um, if you've got this huge amount of staff, even though you laid off a bunch of people that can call, that can say, hey, on behalf of Grant, we want you to know X, Y, and Z is going on. But instead, it was just, you know, it was an email that like, you know, you'll get your money when you get your money. You know, that, yeah. that's kind of, that's kind of the way that it was it come across. But especially with what you just said there, though, of, uh, cash is trash like my my question to a lot of people right now who are grant cardone fans is um and i guys like end of the day that's why i got into real estate is because of grant yeah. cardone so like i haven't a lot to thank him for but you got to practice what you preach and if you are preaching save 40 percent of your gross income to everyone then where is that 40% of his gross income? Yeah. Shouldn't a guy with who owns over $1.5 billion of apartment complexes be able to bankroll his employees, be able to pay his investors if he truly is getting 92% of rent like he's saying? So there's just these like dots that don't connect um, to where it comes across as either I'm hiding something or it comes across as I'm greedy and I've got the money. I just don't feel like giving it to you right now. There's a lot of people that are telling me like, hey, you know, it's it, what if people stop paying in the future? Um, he's just taking the proactive measures. And yes, I agree. He is taking the proactive measures. Luke, it's probably the same reason why you're doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. However, the communication is not there. And when the communication is not there, I have to use my mind and my creativity <laughs> to figure out what are those holes that are missing. Yeah. And that's why I think Grant's in a lot of trouble. I think there's going to be a lot of, a lot of people coming after him that are not happy because he just won't communicate what's going on. Well, just to piggyback off of that, the, the amount of people who have seen your video and my video and several other videos, just very similar to it, all pointing out different things that we don't like about Grant Cardone. It, there's going to be a very big awakening for some people in the space because everyone sees Grant as like, oh, he's this multifamily expert. When in reality, like, I, I disagree with his strategy 100%. A, his terms on his deals are like over leveraged in my mind. He, mm -hmm. he went on Instagram or Facebook or something yesterday and saying he's not over leveraged. I disagree with that. He might not be in some properties, but... Um, he's got these super leveraged properties. They're a class. They are not occupied as well. They're at the top of the roof in rents. And he contradicts himself all the time saying like, you know, I, you want to live in the sunshine tenants don't want to live where it's cold, but then he buys a deal in Maryland. Like, so it's all of this is just like, you don't know yeah. what to believe. And right. so when you get, well, it, you and, know, and like Lucas, I, I want to just go back to one thing you said there, um, because I don't dislike Grant Cardone. In fact, yeah. um, there's there's a lot of things that I really like about him that he he systematizes how how people should treat money the right way. You know, not the Dave Ramsey way, but the right way, yeah. the way that you can build wealth. Like I learned so much from the guy. I just don't agree with the choices he's been making recently. And there's to me, there's no proof that he's actually a bad guy. Yeah. Um, I don't. I can't. 
I don't have like, you know, any video of him, you know, twiddling his thumbs behind <laughs> the camera, be like, haha, these fools, you know, yeah. I, I genuinely don't think that is him. I just think that he got this big name, got a big ego behind it and figured I can go do any deal in the world because I got all the money in the world and didn't think about the consequences on the other side of it. If something like this happened, which like is common right now, a lot of people yeah. didn't see a, a coronavirus happening. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's, uh, essentially, you know, what I just want to clear up is that I don't, I don't think the guy, I don't have proof that the guy is a bad guy. I just don't oh, like yeah. the decisions he's making right now. Yeah. And I, I agree probably with 90% of what he says. Uh, and I actually agree that cash is trash when you're talking about like your personal financial mm -hmm. mindset that you shouldn't be saving money in a savings account or you shouldn't be depending on a 401k or a certificate of deposit, whatever Absolutely. that is. Like I, I'm all on board with that. My beef was the mindset that you're teaching people essentially how to do what you're doing and you're not making that clarification. You're not, <laughs> you're not clarifying that, hey, but you do need a bunch of cash with these giant multifamily buildings so that in case something happens, you can pay for people. And uh, yeah, so I, I agree. Like, I don't, I don't think he's the bad guy at all. I think he's got, I think he's way in over his head right now personally, but, um, but the, the idea behind this podcast and why I specifically wanted to have you on is to talk about like how passive investors or active investors, even because I, ha I have a lot of investors that are active investors. How can, knowing what they know now about people like Grant Cardone, how can they feel comfortable with who they're investing with? Hmm. Um, basically, you're asking me if I were to do it all over again, how, what would I be looking for? Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's an equally good question. Yeah. You know, um, I'll tell you the things that I really liked about what he said when, when I was getting in was, you know, because I wasn't in the trenches. I, I, had a lot of life things going on with yeah. my family. I had um, a new career that I had started. I was questioning whether I wanted to phase out of a different career that I was also doing on the side. And so there was just a lot of things going on and a lot of desire to get into real estate, but not a lot of knowledge or time to truly like put my all into it. So I like the fact that, you know, this was a guy that um, was attracting a lot of people um, from the outside looked like he was doing some great deals. Um, these and guarantees, he did, he did you know, do some really great deals. Uh, it, what's that? He did do some really yeah. great deals. Like you can't argue with that. Yeah. Um, but whether it, that was appreciation or him, like who knows? But yeah, yeah. Well, and, and that's the thing is like, you know, he, his arguments for his side, again, he's a very good salesman. He's a very good marketer. You know, um, the, the sales points of which he made, which were, you know, you don't have the time, you don't have the education, you can't go find the deals yourself. And even if you did find a deal, you wouldn't know if you had a deal or not. And if you did know that you had a deal, then what in the world would you do with it? You don't have any records yeah. of being a property manager or a landlord before. So why not just take that extra X amount of dollars that you have and streamline it to me and get a great 6% return, which you'd be lucky to get if you actually found the deal yourself. All those things sound great, right? Um, well, the, the issue there was that um, the six percent for non-accredited investors was actually four and a half percent. So yeah. that was the weird thing. I saw it on the contract, and and you know I'm very open with the fact that you know like I I'm he didn't lie about that because it was in the contract. He just doesn't really talk about that very much, if ever, mm -hmm. um, when he's on his podcast or you know shouting it out to the world. Um, he says no fees. There definitely were fees. Um, it was minimal enough for me not to really worry about it. But um, then, you know, he really, I guess at the end of the day, the big thing that I said that no matter what, I still have this opportunity to 3x my money in five to seven years, which if you do the rule of 72 with a bank or with, you know, um, money that you're not going to be able to have in five to seven years, uh, it's going to take a lot longer than that to 3x your money. So, for me, all those things, even though I was like, man, I, I know people are doing this more actively that are probably making way more on their money, but I just wasn't in a position um, in my life to really look at being more active with it. Yeah. I mean, that your situation is the exact reason why I started this, like the YouTube channel, everything. Like I want to help busy professionals navigate this world and make it really easy to understand that those terms are 
pure garbage, frankly. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, I mean, his his turn his splits his equity splits are are astronomical. The mm -hmm. fact that you're penalized for not being accredited, when in, in reality the whole reason he wants to advertise is to get in non-accredited investors. Like, right. That that to me is what what frustrates me the most. But I'm also a huge proponent of him being able to do that. Like, if people want to enter into that agreement, they should be able to, but they should have the knowledge. Um, like you have the knowledge now, um, but you're also getting a lot better return on your money now too, which is great, but there's still yeah. pat busy professionals that don't have that ability. And I want to help those people too. Exactly. Well, and that, that's, what's great about what you're doing. I don't know what your returns are, but you know, that was the thing that when I, when I did say yes to real estate, um, you know, finding about this like private money lending and, um, you know, even on active projects, you could be a passive investor and it was like, Whoa, you know, I'm seeing now low end 8% returns mm -hmm. and like a very average 10 to 12% with one or two points. And I was like, shoot, wish I would have known about that. Um, and, and, uh, you know, that, that for me, it was just like this, this loose term of it is the best investment. Uh, like he promotes, it's very far from the best investment is it a bad investment. No, it's not a bad investment. I guarantee you, you will get a lot further with that type of investment than you will with the bank than you will with most uh, of your money and, and, you know, stocks and bonds. Now I'm not a stocks and bonds guy. Right, right. I, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> throwing that out there that I, I believe that. But at the end of the day, um, it's not the best investment. Like he says it is. Yeah, no, I, I, definitely not. Especially like, my my returns are very similar to a lot of other syndicators that are are fairly proficient at this. We usually do like a 70-30 equity split. Investors get 70%. Grant's deals are like 65-35. So he's mm -hmm. getting at least 5% more than uh, of the equity that Which I is a do. lot. It's a, it's a huge, when you're talking about one and a half billion or whatever you said he owns, like that's a lot. And then, uh, you know, our preferred returns are 8% and then whatever that above that is, is split 70, 30. So, you know, 10 to 12% is, is possible and has definitely happened. But again, those are all projections, but yep. you know, when you're saying it's a guaranteed, like your red flag should go up every single time. If you are brand new to real estate and someone is saying it's a guarantee, that's, that's a run. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. And when, here's the thing is like, you know, with all this stuff going on, um, there, there's only so much that we know. He, he might surprise us and in 90 days, give us a balloon payment of everything that um, was missed. And after one year, he might give extra dividends for whatever is left over. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I'll be a happy camper. Again, it's, it's really like, and I, and I want people to understand this. It's not, it's not, the, it's not the, uh, the actual decisions that he's made that is – what's really upsetting me it's the it's the decisions of how he's handling it of that that's truly like what just makes me want to rip my money out of there even if i was going to be penalized and yeah. say i can do way better with my my x amount of dollars than than i am doing right now with you mm -hmm. um and i think at the end of the day lucas you're the kind of guy i can already tell that even if you had um made a tough decision like this your investors trust in you and you're communicating with them that they're not going to say, no, I'm pulling my money out because you treat them the right way. Yeah. You know, and, that, and that's just, that's just all that anyone wants to be treated, right? Whether you're a husband, a wife, a customer, um, a, a, an employee, you just want to be treated the right way. And that's all this comes down to. Yeah. No, I, I think that's, that's a perfect way to end this, this Grant Cardone section. I don't want to bash him and I, and I don't want to, make the entire thing about that, but it yeah. probably will be. But I, you know, I want to talk about what you're doing too. You mentioned the Airbnb stuff too. Give us like a little bit of breakdown of how you made the transition from passive and now why you decided to go active. Cause I think if people have the time and I say this to every investor that comes on board, like I can't touch returns of flipping a house. Like yeah. you're going to make way more money doing that or, or whatever you decide to actively invest. This is for busy professionals who don't have the time. So Take us through that transition to what you're doing now. Yeah, well, it, now everything's changing. You know, we're recording this uh, in early April, yeah. and I don't know when you're going to release it, but, it, you know, we're still dealing with COVID-19 and everything. And so, you know, before COVID-19, my business was, was very structured. It was um, I flipped the deals that come across to me through realtors and wholesalers. 
Um, and then I do Airbnb with my team and I've got to manage down to the place where I can only, or I only have to work on it one to two hours a week. And that allows me to really come in and create as much content as possible, help out as many people as possible, and then consult and teach people on how to do Airbnb as well. Well, March 12th hit, all these cancellations started happening with Airbnb. People got scared. It got worse and worse. And in some markets, you know, people aren't even allowed to do short-term rentals right now uh, because the city has shut it down. But where I'm at right now is my business with Airbnb and my market did not get impacted that much because I went into problem solving mode. You know, you can either conquer fear or you can let fear conquer you. And I decided that the, all this fear of what was going to happen needed to be something that we got proactive with. So my team got to got down to figuring out what can we do. We went month to month short term rentals on 90% of our stuff. Um, the other 10% we kept on Airbnb because we wanted to see how the market was doing. I mean, so in doing this and in testing all this, basically, we found that, wow, like we're still making about 75 to 85% net of what we were making when Airbnb was thriving just four weeks ago. Yeah. And that's really cool. That's really exciting. So um, in just doing all this, what I, what I decided to do was bring all of the information that I got from that and put it into a free course for people to be able to download. So for those of you that are either doing Airbnb or looking to do Airbnb or looking to implement systems for other people to do Airbnb for you so you can make it passive like I was able to do, um, I would really encourage you to just go check out this free course that I've got on my Instagram page, Fearless Flipping 316. Uh, it's, the link is in the bio. It's a five-step course that's going to teach you how to survive and thrive during uh, the pandemic. And so for me, uh, Lucas, just more so like to kind of give you an idea. I mean, we've, we've stopped flipping because we have no idea what property values are going to be on the other mm -hmm. side of this. Uh, it's risky to be flipping right now in my uh, mindset unless there's just so much meat on the bone that um, you can do it. Um, so, you know, to me, the biggest way actively to be able to make a profit right now is either with wholesaling or with creative financing, also known as buying with terms. Um, I don't know yeah. if you want me to go into what those things are. I don't know how educated your audience is about those things, but those are the lowest risk ways to get into an active side of uh, real estate right now because we just don't know what's going to happen on the other side of this. I might get back into flipping, who knows, but um, I just don't want to take those risks right now. Yeah, no, I, you know, we'll, we'll just link to your YouTube page and your Instagram and everything. And people can go if they are interested in this stuff and just go educate themselves. I know I'm going to, because, you know, some people might know we have an Airbnb right next door to us and it's been sitting vacant for um, darn near a month now. So, wow. I mean, and we, and we just, it's one of those things where we don't know when they're going to open back up. And yeah. so we've just kind of been putting it off. So this is something I'm going to look into for sure. Um, but the fearless flipping 316 was your Instagram, right? And that's that where you correct. can go yep. and get the course and everything. And I'm, I'm really excited about this episode. Uh, but just to round it out, um, if you put yourself back in January of, or excuse me, December of 2018, where you were yep. at. Um, what sort of advice would you give to yourself knowing what you know now about passive investing? Uh, yeah, do, do the opposite of what Grant says, which is he, he says just hook on to one person and just take one person's advice. I think that's bad advice. Um, I think you have to have multiple mentors, multiple resources in your life that are um, plain devil's advocate to the things that you think are like winners. And, and I, I think you – you, but at the same time, you don't get paralyzed by analyzing everything. However, if, if I would have done that, if I wouldn't have listened to Grant and said, you know, screw all the other podcasts, I'm only listening to the Cardone Zone, then I would have probably taken a little bit more time to find out that there's other guys like you, Lucas, out there that are giving much better returns um, so that I can be a lot more comfortable with the type of um, investment that I'm making. Um, and, and knowing that you can have a personal relationship with the person too. You know, I, I have every once in a while some deals where I, I have investors come in. And, you know, when all this went down, one of our deals that is a long-term investment for one of my investors, um, he, he called me up and he's like, you need to come to my office right now. And I need to know if I'm keeping my money in this deal or not, because I need to know exactly what's in your bank account, what's in your portfolio. And like, 
that's the kind of relationship that I want to have with my investors where I'm like, Hey, listen, you stay in these deals. You take a part of these deals because you like me, know me and trust me. And, and it's the same thing I told this guy as I told any investor, I don't want you investing with me. If, um, if you don't feel comfortable with either my financial situation or my exit strategies or whatever. So, um, and, and that's not a way to, to get people to invest with me. I'm not actually looking for money right now because we're just not doing any deals that involve spending money. Uh, but what I'm saying is that I would rather link with someone who maybe doesn't have the Grant Cardone name, but has the, the knowledge and the plan and the ability to be able to build a great one-on-one -on -one relationship with me to where I know if I pick up the phone, I can talk to the guy who is letting me invest my money with him. Yeah, no, I, and that's a really good point. I mean, if you, and if there's anybody who wants to raise money for real estate listening to this too, uh, you don't want those people. The worst thing you can do, and I speak from experience, right? You don't want to get an investor in who has buyer's remorse because they will make your life hell. And, yeah. and they'll be on the phone constantly. They'll be second guessing every decision you make. They'll be just, you will not want to be, have them in your deals. You want people yep. who are excited to be in your deal, who trust you and who really want to be your partner in this. And that's what we're going for. So it sounds like you've got that. Um, you know, we'll see how Grant fares and all this, but it's none of our business, right? So, well, it is your business, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm really appreciate you coming on and sharing your story. I know it's not the easiest thing to be talking about, but, uh, Kyle, anything you want to end with? We already got your contact information. We're going to have that at fearfreepassive.com. I'll let you have the last word. Yeah, no, I mean, right now there's a lot of fear and, and I bring this up intentionally because the name of my show is Fearless Flipping. Um, but, you know, it, again, I just want to go back to, you know, are you going to conquer fear or are you going to let fear conquer you? Um, and right now there's so much that's unknown and I'm not saying go and do deals and make decisions right now because you just want to show that you don't have any fear. I'm talking about going out right now and, you know, educating yourself and figuring out exactly uh, what is going to be that next step for you um, to where you can be proactive and figure out like what what can I do to set myself up for in, in Airbnb right now? What I'm telling people is you're making a little bit of money now, so you make a lot of bit of money in the future um, and, and not give up and just stick in there and figure out like how to keep your head above water so that you can be you know on a cruise <laughs> after all this is done. Uh, so that, that's really what I would say is um, just continuing to find out how can you educate yourself to be able to, to get on top of fear. All right. Thanks, Kyle. I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you, Lucas.